In the previous video, we introduced how to create pthreads. Next, let's take a look at how to pass arguments to pthreads. As introduced in the previous video, the entry point of thread is a function. The function must accept a pointer as an input argument and return another pointer as the output argument. These pointers are reserved as socket for the thread to accept the information from the outside and pass back data to the thread that creates the thread. Here, we follow the terms used to describe function calls. We use caller to define the function that creates the thread and use callee to define the thread function. Since these pieces of data are passed by pointers, thread actually share data using the underlying memory. We may question why this argument use type void star. This is because the creator of pthread API do not know what type of data the developers want. The API has to be general. The void star type can be casted into any type of pointer and hence it's the best choice to keep the API general. Since the argument do not carry the type information, the developer has to define it so that the data type is consistent between the caller and the callee side. If the data is a single variable, we can directly pass the pointer to the variable from caller and cast it back in the callee. If more than one piece of information is needed, it is better to group the variables as a struct. For returning data, we have two options. First, we can return another variable or struct from the thread using the return argument of the thread function. Alternatively, we can provide an output argument in the input struct. The output argument needs to be a pointer so that thread can modify the data. Once the thread finishes execution, the modified data can be read by the main thread. Here, we see one example of how to use a struct as input to a thread. We have a thread function similar to the example in the previous video. We print messages a certain number of times. However, this time, we let the main thread define the messages to print and the number of times to print. To provide information to the thread function, we need to define a struct. The struct contains two fields. The count field defines how many times the message needs to be printed. The other field is the message itself. In the thread function, before we can access the data, we need to cast the input argument to the right pointer type. Then, we can access the data in a struct with the regular arrow operator. In the main thread, we need to first define and initialize the struct to pass to the thread. Here, we print one message 10 times and another message 20 times. Next, when we create a thread, we need to use the force argument to pass the struct into the threads. Note that here, we're taking the address of the structs as the pthread API expects pointers. 